After 466 years, Portugal handed back the city of Macau to China. On the peninsula, the ruins of Sao Paulo are well worth a closer look. This was once the bastion of Christianity in Asia. The stone facade was built in 1620 by exiled Japanese Christians, and its wooden interior was once splendidly decorated and furnished. However, fate dealt it a severe blow. In January 1835, a typhoon devastated this symbol of Christianity, and only the facade remained. The Fortaleza do Monte is a typical Portuguese fortified complex, strategically located on a hill above the old cathedral in the heart of the city. Its many old cannons and mighty fortress walls are reminders of those times when invasion was a constant threat. From here, there's a wonderful panoramic view across the entire city. Today, the historic walls of the fortress contain a tranquil garden that is used for gymnastic exercises and traditional Tai Chi. Macau is small and museum-like, a colonial gem in Asia. A fine example of colonial Portugal on the southern China Sea. Fascinating and lively. The original cathedral was destroyed by a typhoon in 1874. Today's cathedral was built in 1937. When Macau became a Portuguese colony in 1557, along with the first settlers came priests who were eager to spread the word of Christianity throughout the Chinese mainland. The interior of the Catholic Cathedral gives an immediate impression of light and space. The adjoining museum contains valuable church treasures such as religious paintings, sculpture and bishops' crowns. Two sturdy towers, massive doors and large mosaic windows dominate the facade. The old centre of the city is the triangular 3,700 square metre Lago do Senado, Senate Square. These wonderful colonial buildings, with their light-coloured facades, were built at the end of the 19th century and completely renovated in the final decade of the 20th century.
Arcades flank the mosaic-covered square and highlights those years when Portuguese influence was at its height. On the southwestern side of the square is the noble-looking Leal Senado. The former residence of the influential city senate is now City Hall. Wide steps lead into a small, tranquil courtyard and garden, as was common in Renaissance architecture. This area contains the stone busts of several of Portugal's leading historic figures. It was from here that the city was successfully ruled for many centuries. Macau's largest Buddhist temple, Kun Yam Tong, dates back 400 years to the Ming Dynasty when its original foundations were built. Beyond its main gate, just off a busy street in the north of the city, is a peaceful oasis of silence and contemplation. A mystical place in which stone lions, golden Buddhas and all who come here are surrounded by serene, aromatic wisps of smoke. Kun Yam, the goddess of mercy, is worshipped by all Chinese, whether Buddhist or Taoist. In Macau, total freedom of religion is the norm. For each of China's religions, including Christianity, tolerance and mutual respect live side by side. Beautiful Jardim Lulim Yok Park is situated in the northern, less touristy business district of the city. It was designed in the 19th century by wealthy Chinese trader Lao Kao. This marvelous oasis is an idyllic setting with a lotus pond, rocks, grottos, and waterfalls, a place of contemplation and relaxation. This is a good location to take photos. The elderly rest on shady benches and elegant courtyards and arcades add the finishing touch. Its design was based on the famous Suzhou Gardens and is evocative of China's fine old traditional ink paintings. A zigzag bridge spans the pond because it's believed that evil spirits can only move in a straight line. With its tall veranda, this large pavilion was built in pseudo-Victorian style during the Qing dynasty. The view is truly captivating.
The large tiled arched gate emphasizes the symbolic importance of this magnificent garden, which is now open to the public. In the heart of the city, the Cemeterio de San Miguel is Macau's largest Catholic cemetery. Ornate gravestones and statues of angels adorn the graves of several influential Portuguese families and those of the many Chinese who converted to Christianity. It's very similar to a European cemetery and at its center there is a light-colored chapel that dates back to 1875. The interior of the neo-Gothic building is beautifully illuminated due to its colourful mosaic windows. A large fountain greets visitors to the Jardim Louis de Camoas. In the 18th century, Macau's oldest park belonged to the British East India Company. Men bring songbirds to the park to display the singing skills of the tiny, caged creatures. The local people enjoy this place of tranquility and relaxation, where both young and old appreciate the surroundings. This was once a famous retreat for the writer Louis de Camus. Close by, a tall gate leads to an elegant building that dates back to colonial times, surrounded by an immaculate garden. Today, this building is owned by the Fundicha Oriente, and in past times was the residence of the authorized agent of the East India Company. Here, noisy traffic is the order of the day. Tightly packed four-story buildings add to the narrow, almost claustrophobic streets. Perhaps this is the reason for the existence of the many prayer niches. Entrance to the inner part of the harbour and dating back to the 15th century is the city's oldest place of worship for its Chinese inhabitants, Ama Miu. It was built into a mountainside. Ama, the Taoist goddess of seafarers and fishermen, is worshipped here. This temple complex existed long before the arrival of the Portuguese. Legend has it that a Chinese junk once sailed into a dangerous typhoon and a young and beautiful woman saved all on board by subduing the raging storm. Across steep pathways and with a wonderful view of both harbour and temple, there are four prayer pavilions in which the numerous benevolent gods are worshipped. Mm -hmm. 
Featured in the main courtyard is the stone image of the junk in which the goddess and patron of the city of Macau is said to have landed. Opposite the temple by the water's edge is the modern Museo Maritimo. The museum covers the history of all those who have lived in this ancient European settlement of Macau. European conquerors, mighty mandarins, cruel pirates, missionaries and traders. Shipbuilding is also featured along with a combination of Portuguese customs and thousands of years of Chinese culture exhibited on three floors. The museum also contains a display of fishing techniques. This underlines how much the sea has influenced the character of this intriguing city. Excursions are available on restored motorized junks that leave from the museum's pier several times a day. A journey by junk is a fascinating and nostalgic experience. The junk travels along the coast and provides a perfect view of the city's modern skyline with its skyscrapers and huge television tower beneath a long bridge towards Taipa. Completed in 1974, the three kilometer long and 30 meter high bridge extends from Macau to the island of Taipa. Far out at sea, there's a site of the Penha Church on the southern hillside of the peninsula. The harbour has all the wonderful atmosphere of a bygone age. Taipa is the largest of the two islands that belong to Macau. Tangled and narrow alleys in the center of Villa Taipa abound with rural character. Portuguese street signs are painted on azulejus, and the island's shops and light colored houses would be equally at home in Portugal. Passing wonderfully restored colonial houses, several small restaurants and cafes next to small temple niches provide the perfect opportunity to relax. The islanders are highly religious and take great pride in their temples, in which the art of feng shui plays an important part. Religious tolerance is observed here too. A 
Above Villa Taipa is the Carmo Catholic Church that was built in the 19th century. It boasts a square and some interesting buildings. The airy and attractive Catholic Church is very popular for weddings and various other religious celebrations. In contrast, the Chinese temples are smaller, intimate places of worship. During Macau's golden years, the remote bays on the outer island of Goloane were the haunt of pirates. Even today, this tiny village exudes an atmosphere of pirates and adventure, and Buddha watches over all. In the shipyards in the north of the island, as in former times, wooden planks destined to form the hull of traditional junks are carefully shaped over an open fire. With its attractive, though partly dilapidated buildings, the promenade is reminiscent of a Mediterranean resort. Villa Coloane is a tiny Portuguese square, encircled by arcades and crowned by the Capella de Francisco Xavier. The bones of 59 Japanese martyrs are stored within a sacrarium, and of particular interest is the painting of a Chinese Madonna and child. At the end of the promenade is the Chinese Tan Kung Temple that contains a model of a ship carved out of whalebone. The journey back to Macau returns over the long, elegant bridge. Next, a place of both present and future, the Museo do Grande Premio, an absolute mecca for motorsport fans. The museum features the colorful history of the famous Macau Grand Prix that takes place in the city each November. Grand Prix is the social and sport event of the year. Although the Macau of today has much contemporary flair, it continues to enjoy its rich colonial inheritance. Now there are skyscrapers on land that has been reclaimed from the sea. Impressive bridges connect the islands, and deep sea harbors and new airports have added to its appeal. For many years, Macau's casinos were its principal source of revenue and created the wealth that financed the island. Since the middle of the 19th century and lying only 60 kilometers away, the former British colony of Hong Kong was this region's glittering center of capitalism, while Macau was a place of melancholy and nostalgia. 
However, today, both belong to China.